That's it, folks. Terminator is now more reality than sci-fi. Oh, and by the way, obey the law or face a sentence in a prison of the future, which puts the movie platform to shame. Talking about shame, ever wonder what happened to that second Neuralink chip surgery? We got you covered and more, like cats, in this episode. Meow. But first, it's been six months since news broke of figure one humanoid making some dinero at the BMW plant. Depending on which side of the fence you hail from, fortunately or unfortunately, it seems the robot isn't ready just yet. At least figure one won't be able to afford the electricity necessary to power it. Figure one carefully picks up parts off the shelf and places them onto pins, doesn't bang them against anything and looks pretty agile doing it. I totally trust it to be my dog sitter. Look at those smooth movements. Developers say all the movements are totally autonomous, not controlled by an operator, but by neural networks, which also includes the option of autocorrection. On the other hand, it doesn't look like the robot is at a BMW workshop, even though the video says Spartanburg. Whatever the case may be, this is evolution, not revolution in action. It's still impressive to watch a human looking robot handling metal parts, right? Kind of like watching Pong in the 1970s for the first time. Pretty cool. You know what else is cool? The Japanese. Apparently, if you mix anime, a lot of omega-3s, and a sprinkle of fat man radiation, you hit a jackpot. Like in this case, engineers from the University of Tokyo managed to create and then attach a bit of skin on a robot. Woohoo! In the not-so-distant future, they'll be able to cover an entire robot's body, you know, so that it looks natural and not at all scary. To achieve this elasticity, scientists made a mold of a human face with tiny multiple V-shaped holes to attach the living skin to the robot's synthetic surface. They then coated it with a gel composed of collagen and human skin fibroblasts, which in turn produce connective tissue. Some of the gel flowed into the holes and after seven days of culturing, voila! The gel formed a coating of human skin that was securely attached to the mold. Now they plan to make the skin thicker and even more realistic by incorporating sweat glands, pores, blood vessels, fat, and nerves. The last one is clearly a call to the future when robots get to marry Latina chicks and test their crazy. But in all fairness, this is a bit unnerving. Definitely Terminator comes to mind since if that's almost here, then does this mean some skunk project company is hiding a time machine somewhere? Make sense? Let us know in the comments. Now, if you think we're done with high tech, you're sorely mistaken because them Chinese scientists, specifically from Tianjin and Southern University of Science and Technology, managed to get live brain cells to control a microchip. First came the Metabok biocomputer interface. It represents living human brain cells connected to biocomputer organoids on a chip. Now, they hope that the system can learn to control robots, perceive the world through electronic signals, and handle basically anything it gets its quote-unquote hands on. This is, however, not the first attempt to create an intelligent machine with real human brain cells. Biocomputing is one of the strangest fields these days. For example, this Australian company, Dishbrain, grew about 800,000 brain cells on a chip. They then placed it in a simulated environment and watched as this Frankenstein learned to play Pong in five minutes. Obviously, this success did not go unnoticed by the military and they took the company under their wing, giving it access to a lot of money and renaming it Cortical Labs. Now, why is this direction interesting? Well, the fact is that even at an early stage, biocomputers based on human neurons, according to scientists, learn much faster and consume less energy than today's machine learning chips with artificial intelligence. At the same time, it seems that biocomputers show more intuition, insight, and creativity compared to traditional AI systems. But this system has drawbacks as well. For example, organoids are quite difficult to keep in a living, working state. They need to be fed and then fed again and protected from COVID and always kept in a favorable environment. To date, the most impressive record for maintaining life in organoids belongs to the same cortical labs, which lasted for about a year. 
can't wait to see GPT versus biocomputers duking it out in chess or bobsleigh. It would suck if a biocomputer lost though and went into depression trying to cover its inability to win with some nonsense like claiming to change its gender. Because some researchers believe such systems have consciousness. After all, people are always looking for consciousness in artificial intelligence, and if an AI system works on living human brain cells, well then naturally, it would be alive, wouldn't it? What do you guys think? Here's another gem from the future. Hashim al the guy who said let's grow children in factories and transplant a human head, just got a new bright idea. This guy's like Trump after a few martinis, tweeting anything that comes to mind. So he says, instead of keeping prisoners in jail for years and years at the expense of the state, let's put these prisoners into a virtual prison and make them relive their crimes over and over. Al Gailey calls this the Cognify Project, basically embedding synthetic memories of the crime in the perpetrator's brain but from the victim's point of view. The system will include advanced virtual reality devices that will display footage of the crime and a brain implant that will induce emotional states such as remorse or regret, feelings that some people cannot experience without a little nudge in the right direction. In doing so, the memories would be permanent, providing a lasting effect. The developer believes that this will be enough to prevent new crimes and the rehabilitation itself in a few minutes will seem like years to the prisoner. This is how it's gonna work. Prisoners will get a high-res brain scan to get a detailed map of their neural pathways. Then Cognify will target specific areas of the brain responsible for memory, reasoning, and logical thinking. In addition to visual effects, the technology could also stimulate a physical response, allowing the perpetrator to feel the pain and suffering their victim has endured. Sounds good for violent crimes, doesn't it? But what about all those frequenting Nantucket et al? they'd probably enjoy a family unable to make their house payments. Talking about digits, Agility Robotics Robot will compete with the Apollo Robot at GXO Warehouses for the right to be Employee of the Month. Check out our previous Apollo video in the description below. Now it's time to tell you about the multi-year agreement between Agility and GXO after Digit successfully hauled crates at the Spanx factory. GXO has a good legal team, so they won't be buying the robots flat out. Instead, Digits will be hired operating under the RAS model, i.e. robot as a service, which is basically a fancy term for leasing where Agility is responsible for maintenance and operation while GXO just drops cash. An entire fleet of Digit robots is about to land in Connecticut. Get ready! They'll all be hooked up to Agility Arc, a cloud-based platform that provides full control of all robots simultaneously, like object mapping, operational management, and troubleshooting. Spanx won't even have to change anything on their premises, just airdrop Digits and off they go. We for one can't wait till we can ship a few hundred digits into the eye of the Sahara and close this debate about Atlantis once and for all. Since we're on the topic of lowered expectations, Neuralink canceled last minute their second implant surgery. They say it has nothing to do with the gadget or the surgery itself, but the poor health of the selected volunteer. Well, the real Dr. House Please stand up. Now a new operation should be expected next month, fingers crossed, because the first volunteer and basically a test pilot of the chip recently talked about how he plays Call of Duty and his frame rate is insane. He basically has an aimbot in his head, referring to bots that automatically point weapons at opponents in video games, which is second only to noob tubing. Noland believes there should be different leagues for COD players since it's just not fair to all you mouse clickers. Halo players, get ready because Noland says that's the next game on his list. And anybody who wants to generate AI video is more than welcome to check out Sora's competitor, Runway's Gen 3 Alpha AI. It's a first of several AIs trained by Runway on a new infrastructure built for large-scale, multimodal learning. But already, the neural network can generate realistic and high-quality videos up to 10 seconds long. 
Neural networks in general are getting better day by day. Just check out these cutie patooties eating noodles. Isn't that adorable? What's not adorable is Space Pioneer's rocket launch. The Chinese SpaceX wannabe suffered a first stage fiasco when it spontaneously broke away from the launch pad, got 600 something feet or several hundred meters in the air and then fell exploding. The company said it was due to quote, structural failure, but we think it was God's way of saying you shouldn't combine pork with chicken in a lab. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. In line with playing catch up though, China will also start launching satellites into orbit to create its own Starlink-like network. The first 18 satellites will be launched and deployed in August of this year for a total of 12,000 satellites. Now to help you get over the fact that soon we won't be able to see stars in the sky because of all the satellites blocking them, we got some robot videos for you. Here, for example, Unitree's H1 is putting on sneakers. That's cute. The robot learned this from watching humans, most likely pre-K. And here's Deep Robotics' robot dog walking on its hind legs, like a monkey, ready to be shot into space. Hopefully that done did it for you guys. If you haven't yet, subscribe to Pro Robots, like our videos, and check out our Instagram for more news from the world of high tech.